you're going to want to watch today's show. That's all I'm going to say. Hi, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Detailed. To get started, I'd like to combine former Dash in the News with business news to just be business and headlines. To start, check out this beautiful footage of a General Bytes CTM, that is cryptocurrency teller machine, dispensing Dash in exchange for paper cash. Dash is now supported on all General Bytes CTMs if the machine's operator chooses to enable it. To get the word out about this, General Bytes has started a thunderclap campaign and they are still short of the 100 participants that they would like to sign up with either Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr to spread the news on February 24th that Dash can now be enabled on General Bytes. Elsewhere, the online exchange and trading platform BitMEX has just enabled Dash derivatives. If you know next to nothing about the legacy fiat economy, like myself, you may wonder what does that mean? Well, apparently it means that people will be able to use Bitcoin, not Dash, but Bitcoin on BitMEX to make bets about Dash's future prices. Hey, who doesn't like gambling while they gamble? As one Dash Slack user pointed out, this may not initially bring an increase in Dash ownership, but it certainly brings more exposure. In headlines, Cointelegraph's Frisco de Anconia published an article called Why Dash Dislodged Ethereum Classic for the Sixth Spot on Coin Market Cap. And the 12.1 release was covered elsewhere, here in BTC News, here in Econo Times and here in Coin Journal. Finally, in headlines, Dash made the number four spot in Bitcoinist's list of best performing cryptocurrency of January 2017. Interesting to note, however, is that spots one through three are occupied by colored Bitcoins. So colored coins aside, Dash was the best performing native cryptocurrency for January. Cool. Now let's talk about network statistics. At this time, Dash 12.1 and 12.0 are still playing nicely together, which is to say there has been no enforcement or spork activated. What, you ask? I thought it was set for February 12th. So did I, so did many others. So to get clarification on this, I reached out to Dash's quality assurance manager, Flair, or Holger Schinzel. Holger said, in so many words, that at this time the network is still what he would consider indecisive, and an indecisive Dash network has the propensity to create an accidental fork by part of the network thinking that masternode A should be paid, and part of the network thinking that in the same block, masternode B should be paid. In order to prevent such a scenario from happening, Flair says that he and other core team members are monitoring several parameters which indicate network health, and that while the network is growing a little healthier every day, it is not yet healthy enough to turn on the enforcement spork. All of that aside, our current masternode count is actually at an all-time high, uh, 4,396 to be precise. Of these, more than 75% have upgraded to 12.1, and roughly 6% appear to be in the process of doing so. That leaves us with about 18% of masternodes who've not yet upgraded at all. In mining, today's hash rate is 2.21 terahashes, and it ought to be said of Dash's miners that 100% of them have upgraded to 12.1. Well done! To put this hash rate into context, here is our three-month chart, our one-year chart, and the lifetime chart. In other network stats, you may have noticed, especially if you're a masternode owner, that some of Dash's miners, not a lot, but about 7% of them, are cheating. What does this mean? Well, it means that instead of sending half of the block reward to masternodes, which they usually do, during this transition period, while 12.1 and 12.0 are co-operating, they are able to instead keep that payment for themselves. 
Now this cheating mechanism will no longer be available once the enforcement spork happens. And of course, it should be noted that 93% of Dash's hash power is being honest, but it does bring to mind a comment that lead developer Evan Duffield made in a podcast about a year ago about future plans to require that hash power be collateralized. What a forward thinking guy. Now let's move to development updates. Dash now has check lock time verify, hooray! What does that mean? Okay, so when the majority of Dash's hash power switched to 12.1, we incorporated certain elements of Bitcoin's code base as we have a Bitcoin code base and we update from them from time to time. Among these updates was a Bitcoin improvement proposal or BIP 65. And BIP65 is also called a check lock time verify. To find out more about what that means for Dash, I reached out to developer Mukao Mu. He said that check lock time verify enables coins to be locked away for a day, a month, even a year, and only able to be retrieved at later dates, which he mentioned has implications for things like smart contracts or escrow. In short, and in Mukao Mu's words, Dash can do more tricks now. In other development updates, if you are having trouble using Electrum Dash, you would not be the only one. Uh, there is a support thread going on here, and you may find that there are some fixes for any problems you may be experiencing. And finally, in development updates, Instant Send, that is Dash's capability to instantly confirm a transformation, is not working during the transition time, that is during the time that 12.1 and 12.0 are still playing nicely together. So don't try to use it, you would just be disappointed. Now to price movement. There is a bit of a flurry going on, though it may have completely died out by the time you watch this video, or it may have reached new heights of hysteria. Nevertheless, at the time being, Dash's price in US dollars is $18.08 .08 a coin. This gives us a market capitalization of roughly $128 million, with 7.1 million coins available, and a 24-hour trade volume of $1.9 million worth of Dash. Let's look at some historical charts for market cap. Here is three months, here is one year, and here is lifetime, or three years ago until now. At this time, allow me to correct an error that I made two shows ago, which was the expected date of Dash's decrease in inflation, or that is, new coins created. See, every year, Dash's new coins created decreases by about 7%. I had reported before that that decrease was set to happen on February 12th, and I was wrong. It's actually set to happen the afternoon of March 4th. And now to social happenings. The winners of Dash Force's meetup contest have been announced, and they were two. First was community member Milliarderko for his meetup in Krasnodar, Russia. And second was community member Blue Trader for his meetup in Swanee, Georgia. Both received 7.75 Dash in compensation. Congratulations. And of course, let us not forget that an honorable mention was given to the meetup held in Kazakhstan. I could never not enjoy saying that word, not ever. In other social happenings, the video footage of Dash core team member Robert Wyko presenting at ICE Totally Gaming in London has been released. And elsewhere, I had the opportunity to give an interview about Dash to the popular YouTube channel Anarchast. The host, Jeff Berwick, was talking about Bitcoin on his show way back in 2011, and so it was very fitting and very fortuitous that he allowed the first chat about Dash on his show now. That's it for Dash Detailed this week, my friends. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you will come back for next week's episode, which will be published on Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, as per usual. All right, see you then.